Hey guys, this week, when is a bee a fish? Miraculous 3D printed ears. Why your brain trips out, the EU's hypocrisy, the problem with social media, and the wonders of the universe. Did you know that bees are fish? Okay, not really, but they are in California. You see, the California Endangered Species Act protects birds, mammals, fish, amphibians, reptiles, and plants, and its definition of fish includes invertebrates. In 2018, environmental groups and the state's Fish and Game Commission pushed to list four bumblebee species as endangered, successfully arguing that the act's inclusion of invertebrates technically allows it to cover all of them, not just the fishy ones. Then quickly came the agricultural groups filing a successful lawsuit in 2020 to overturn the decision. But last week, the judges at the California Court of Appeals overturned the overturn, allowing the endangered bees to qualify as fish to protect them. It's not the first time something like this has happened. In the 17th century, the Catholic Church asserted that beavers were fish. And in 1893, the United States Supreme Court said tomatoes are vegetables. It's unclear if this bees are fish ruling will stick since agricultural groups may take the case further, but we hope it does, because without bees, we're gonna die a slow and painful death. A team of scientists from 3D Biotherapeutics have successfully transplanted a 3D printed ear made from the patient's own cells. The patient was born with a congenital deformity called microtia, where the outer ear does not fully develop during the first trimester of pregnancy. The scientists used half a gram's worth of the patient's cells and propagated them into billions. A special 3D printer then uses an ink based on collagen to print the ear. They then successfully transplanted the ear onto the patient where it was expected to grow and grow, generating new cartilage tissue. How wild is that? But to be clear, what they made was not an entire ear, just the external part, which is a relatively simple appendage that's more cosmetic than functional. That being said, this trial could be the first of its kind, with the company hoping to apply the same technique to other body parts, including spinal discs, noses, and rotator cuffs. So, if you could get a new body part printed, what would you choose? Let us know in those comments. Put your phone up right to your face and stare at this image for a few seconds, ready? Does it make you feel like you're being swallowed by a black hole? If so, you're not alone. A new paper published in Frontiers in Human Neuroscience claims that about 86% of people experience the same effect. You're perceiving that you, not the obviously fixed image, is moving with your pupils acting kind of like dimmer switches dilating and constricting according to the light in the environment. Images that feature black holes cause sustained unconscious dilation, which is what you experience when you're walking into a tunnel. As our mate Anil Seth has said, time and time again, optical illusions are proof that perceptions don't always reflect reality. If you want to dive deeper into this idea, check out the Neuroscience of Consciousness on our YouTube channel. Should Europe stop paying for Putin's war? It's the question Peter Singer poses in his latest opinion piece. Since the start of the Russia-Ukraine war, the EU has paid 35 billion euros for Russian energy, roughly 1 billion euros a day. Compare that to the total 1 billion euros sent to Ukraine as foreign aid. Peter argues that European countries could have responded to Russia's invasion with their own armed forces, but instead took the less risky route of economic sanctions and sending weapons to Ukraine. He suggests that if they're going to use sanctions as an alternative to military action, they should take on the economic hardship from ceasing to use Russian energy. There's a moral imperative to stop paying blood money to Russia and while a growing number of member states are calling on the EU to implement a total embargo on Russian fossil fuels, some members who have different energy mixes are therefore unequally exposed to the consequences of a cutoff and are less inclined. What do you think takes priority? Moral imperatives, economic concerns, or can both be considered at the same time? Let us know your thoughts in those comments. Is everything really falling apart? If you follow Jonathan Haidt around the internet over the past few months, you'd get the sense that he considers social media a significant source of what ails us. In a thought-provoking chat with Robert Wright, John goes into a number of ideas around this topic. For example, he expresses his fear that digital technology, especially social media, may stop humans from cooperating ever again. While Robert contends that the rate of disruption these technologies have imposed has been incredibly fast, and so may be our adaptation to them. John also expresses how social media has created an atmosphere of fear where professors are afraid of their own students and are less likely to be provocative in how they teach. Whereas Robert thinks this might only be an issue at elite campuses and that being more sensitive to individual differences is sensible. It's definitely worth a listen. We are nothing but highly organized collections of the various ingredients that make up everything else in the universe. 
That's what Professor Brian Green said when musing about humankind's place in the cosmic order in a recent interview with Radio New Zealand. Over the course of 25 minutes, Brian dives into the possibility of there being intelligent life out there, the many unknowns around the origins of the cosmos, the possibility of parallel universes, and so much more. What resonated with us was his thoughts on the human condition. He said, We have surmounted a great many challenges and when you look at what's happening today you can't help but say we are still so selfish it's utterly astounding what we do to ourselves but i like to think that these are momentary blips momentary challenges momentary setbacks in the grand scheme of of human progress because there is so much on the positive side if you want to see brian live on stage or online next year grab your tickets at link in our bio at thinkinc.org slash green that's it for this week, guys. Don't forget to grab your tickets to see Brian Green live on stage and sign up to our newsletter for specials on upcoming tours, Thinking Academy courses, and more. Just head to that link in our bio or visit thinking.org. See you next week.